So it's been a little under 24 hours since Russian President Vladimir Putin um, announced the invasion of uh, Ukraine. And since then, there have been a number of attacks on various cities, including the capital Kiev. And since then, uh, many casualties are already being reported. For more on this, we have our Kim Sang Min on the line with us. Sang Min, give us the latest updates on the situation. Mogan, Ukraine's health minister said 57 people were killed and 169 wounded on the first day of the Russian invasion. According to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, around 100,000 Ukrainians are believed to have left their homes and are displaced within their own country. The country's capital, Kiev, is currently under curfew following Russia's attack as residents attempting to flee by car clog the city's main road, way exit points. Multiple media sources have reported that Ukrainian men aged between 18 to 60 will not be allowed to leave the country due to martial law, with Ukraine's president reportedly announced the general mobilization of Ukrainian forces. And this comes as Russia's defense ministry called the first day of the invasion of Ukraine, quote, successful, and that it has achieved its goal for the day. Russian forces took control of the Chernobyl power plant in northern Ukraine, the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster after a fierce battle. The IAEA said the power plant is running safely so far with no damage reported. CNN reported that Russian airborne troops have also taken control of an air base near the capital. Citing an anonymous Western intelligence official, Al Jazeera reported that Russia has eliminated Ukraine's air defenses and now has complete air superiority over Ukraine. In, re in response to the attack, the U.S. is planning to send 7,000 troops to Germany to back up NATO allies. The troops are expected to leave for Germany in the coming days. Right. And what has been the latest response from the international community to this attack? Well, world leaders are strongly condemning Russia, with the U.S. President Joe Biden saying that he agreed with fellow G7 leaders to levy severe sanctions on Russia to hold them to account. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. And Putin's aggression against Ukraine will end up costing Russia dearly, economically and strategically. We will make sure of that. Sanctions announced by the U.S. so far include cutting up one trillion U.S. dollars worth of Russian assets from U.S. banks. That that'll include Russia's largest financial institution, Bar Bank, which holds nearly one third of the Russian banking sector's assets. Sanctions also include preventing 13 major state-owned companies from raising money from the U.S. market. Biden also hit Russia with tough export curbs. He said, in coordination with Europe, the Allies will cut off more than half of Russia's high-tech high-tech imports from commercial electronics and computers to semiconductors and aircraft parts. Sanctions have been imposed on Russian elites and family members as well um, as on Belarus over their support for Russia's invasion. EU leaders have also affirmed that massive and severe consequences will follow and the sanctions will be put on Russia's financial, energy and transport sectors and export controls. That's all I have for now. I'll be back with more updates. Back to you.